This week we'll talk all about metadata. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have an awesome question from Anand in Houston, Texas. Anand asks, what exactly is metadata? Well, Anand, metadata is specifically, it's data about data. So what that means is your images or your videos or any kind of digital asset you have, it can be all kinds of different things, but that's data. So it's bits that make up an image. And then there's data about that image. And so it might be the dimensions, the pixels per inch, the copyright owner, keywords, all kinds of things. And metadata is awesome because you can use metadata to uh, help search for images, to protect your ownership rights. And also it's great for use in workflow. So if somebody else is gonna be using those images, uh, for example, maybe a newspaper or a magazine, well, you can embed all kinds of stuff in your image and it just shows right up in all kinds of applications. In fact, there are dozens and dozens of applications that read metadata. And so what I really want to do is dive in and show you why you really need to know about metadata and how to use it and how it'll really help you in your workflow. So let's dive right in. The best way to understand exactly what metadata is, is just to jump in and start looking at some of this stuff. And so I have Lightroom open here. I'm gonna show you some stuff that's in Aperture as well as other places, but we're gonna start in Lightroom because it's an industry standard application that's used both on Macs and PCs. And so it's a great way to learn about metadata. So what I've done here is I've selected this file right here. This is a file of Sam Kazuch. She's a model that we shot for one of our one-on-one -on -one episodes. And we know some things about this image. We know that it was chosen because there's a little flag here and we know that I shot it, but how do we really know that stuff? Well, that's what metadata really helps us understand. So on the side here on uh, in Lightroom, there's a metadata tab and next to that, there are all these different types of metadata. And this is really gonna help us out once we understand the different types of metadata. The most common type is called EXIF. Now, EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File Format. And this is the information that your camera embeds in the file when you take a picture. It tells us things like uh, what the dimensions of the file are, the original date and time this was taken, what the exposure was, what the shutter speed was, where the aperture was set. We know that we were using a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens, and we know that it was zoomed to 92 millimeters and our camera was set at ISO 100. All that stuff that we have our camera set to is recorded in the image itself. This is great information for us when we're learning how to shoot pictures to go in and look exactly what our camera was set to to make sure we don't make mistakes. So for example, maybe this is a very blurry image and maybe we go in here and see that our uh, shutter speed was set to maybe 15th of a second. We would go, oh, okay, shutter speed was too slow. And so this really helps us out in uh, later times to understand exactly how we had our camera set how to repeat something or how to avoid something. So that's called EXIF data, and that is in all of your photos by default. Even if you don't know it, it's stuck in there, and you can use that when you're viewing information. Now there's another type of metadata, and it's a standard that was created, and it's called IPTC. Now IPTC is short for International Press Telecommunications Council. And what IPTC data is used for, what it was used for originally, were press photographers, people taking pictures of newsworthy stories. They would need to start putting in information. For example, uh, who was the person that shot this image and what's their address and what's the phone number if we need to get in touch with them or their email and what's their website and then what's the headline. So, you know, it could be something like Storm is uh, approaching New York City and what's the description. And so you'd add a description there. There might be a subject code that you would use specific to your newspaper or your magazine. And then there are all these other different categories here. And IPTC data is a standard that's used by all types of uh, industries, not just newspapers and television stations, but it's used by all kinds of people. And IPTC, IPTC data is so rich, there are all kinds of places that you can go to learn about it. So I'm gonna go over here to my web browser and there is a great uh, a page, it's IPTC.org and it tells you all about IPTC data and what all the fields are and what the standards are. So if you really wanna dig in and be a little bit nerdy about metadata, this is a great place to go. There's another website I wanna mention really quickly and it's called photometadata.org. 
And this is a resource that everybody should take a look at because it'll teach you all about metadata. There's metadata resources. There are information about software that uses and reads metadata. There are standards for making sure you enter metadata correctly. All the stuff that you need to do need to know about metadata is on this page. And between these two sites, you will have a very firm grasp of all things metadata. So let's zip back over here to Lightroom and start using some metadata. You can see there are other standards here. There's IPT extension, which is all the IPT stuff with a little bit more added to it. And then there are also things like large caption if you want to add a really long caption to an image. And these are just things that help you understand uh, how to enter information in really quickly. Location information, some allow you to put in GPS location. There's a quick describe here. So there's all different ways uh, and views of all this different types of med metadata. And you can customize this in Lightroom and other applications. So you can just see the fields that you use a lot and get right in there. So let's talk about another piece of metadata and that's the keywording. And so keywording allows you to add keywords to an image. And these are great things to use. So right now we have this uh, image right here. It's labeled Sam Kazuch. I'm going to put in a couple more keywords here. So I'm going to put in blonde and smile and female and let's say blue and gray because of the colors there and maybe lighting and uh, I'll just say uh, yeah, pretty. So there we go. Just some basic keywords. Now the nice thing about this is those are now um, attached to this file and you can see down here I can, uh, if I go to a different image, I can just click on some of these recent keywords to add them to that. Or I can copy those over uh, syncing my metadata down here on this little tab down here. It's one of the great things about Lightroom is that you can do all that kind of stuff. Well, let's keep on track here. So now that we have all of this stuff in here, we'll see one thing that's really important and that is that our metadata has changed. And so we can go down here to this little uh, area right here and it says metadata status has been changed. And if I click on this little icon, it's going to ask me if I want to save these changes to disk. I'm going to say cancel, so I'm not going to do that right now. But one of the things that's really important to understand is where this information is saved. There are two ways that metadata is saved. One is the information is embedded. In other words, when you save the image, all the metadata is saved inside that image and so everybody can see it. There's another way that image is saved, that, that information is saved, and that's with uh, something called XMP, Extensible Metadata Platform. And that's something that was created by Adobe. If we go right back over here, there's another website that's great. It's called products slash XMP at the Adobe website. And it's all about the Extensible Metadata Platform or XMP. This is a standard that is used across platforms to read metadata. And what that means is you can enter metadata once in one application and then read it from all other applications. For example, Aperture or Premiere or Bridge or Photoshop or Illustrator and the list goes on and on and on. And so it's a very useful tool and it comes with all the new Adobe applications. It's built right in. So let's go in here and I will show you a practical example of this. So right here, this metadata status has been changed. If I click that, I'm going to say save. And now this is going to save this to a disk. So what I will do here is I'll show you exactly what this looks like. So I'll say show in finder. And our image number was 5920. Here it is. And now notice we have this file here. It's .xmp, again, short for extensible metadata platform. And if I open this with a text editor, so I'll just go in here and ask my text editor to open this up. Here we go. And now watch what happens. We can look and see all of this data. And this is in an XML format. So your web geeks out there are very familiar with XML. But this has all of that data in a format that is open standard. So all kinds of different applications can use this. And as new applications come out on the market, they can still read this data. And so it is application agnostic. In other words, it doesn't care if you're opening this in Lightroom or Photoshop or Aperture on a Mac or a PC or a Unix machine, it doesn't matter. This information is going to go with this file. And that is the beauty of XMP. Now just to illustrate this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say save metadata for all of these files. 
and it's going to go through here and save all this information for this entire folder so all the files will now have that sidecar now I can do that by default in Lightroom and so what I can do is I can go in here and I can go to my catalog preferences and there's a checkbox here that says automatically write changes in XMP when that's unchecked I get a warning saying that changes made in Lightroom will not automatically be visible in other applications because it's stored in Lightroom, not in XMP. And so if I open an image, let's say in Aperture, it's not going to have access to that XMP. So I can say, hey, always do this and that warning goes away. I like to leave that unchecked because I don't like to have a lot of XMP files in my on my hard drive. But I can go in here and I'll show this in Finder one more time and now you can see that we have bunches and bunches of XMP files where we didn't before. That's because all that information is now saved. Now let's go do a couple things. So we have this blonde, blue, female, gray, light, gray, pretty, Sam, Kazooch, smile. All that stuff is on this image right here. What I want to do now is see if this actually works in a different application. And you saw that I just added that uh, I was live while we were doing this tutorial. I'm going to go over here to Aperture and I'm going to import some files. Now I've already uh, preset this so I'm already going to where these files are located these are the files we just looked at and I'm going to import these into Aperture and they're gonna come right in here <clears throat> these are pretty cool and there's all my images Now let's see exactly which file we wanted to look at it's file 5920 so I'll go back over here and let's find 5920 really quickly there it is I'll go over here to metadata on the left and look at that here is all that stuff. So blonde, blue, female, gray, lighting, pretty, Sam Kazoot, smile. All that stuff that we entered in here, the copyright status, all the IPTC data. And notice that Aperture has similar uh, groupings of XF or uh, metadata, XF info, uh, info, GPS info, photo info, file info, all kinds of stuff in here that we can look at. And it's the same information that we had in Lightroom. And that's the beauty of metadata is that it doesn't care where you're looking at the file. It will show up in Lightroom or Aperture, Mac, PC, doesn't matter. It will go almost everywhere. That's a really, really nice feature. Now let's look at one more thing really fast. I'm going to zip back over here to Lightroom. And we're going to do something that's uh, sort of fun. So let's put this into a practical, uh, it's something that you would actually use. So I'm going to go in here. Here's a photo of Sam, and uh, you know she's just sort of looking uh, to the left there, sort of nice. So I'm going to keyword this. So I'm going to put in here blonde and smile and uh, happy and blue shirt and uh, you know female. I will leave it at that. Okay, we have that. And then in the caption here, I'm going to put in um, uh, happy female looking left okay something very very generic I have all my copyright information in there all that's there now I want to use this in a way that would actually benefit me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my file and I'm going to export this with a preset and I'm going to export this to Shutterstock now Shutterstock I've built this preset so this will actually take the metadata it will save it as a JPEG image at full resolution. And this is going to send this image over an FTP right to my Shutterstock account. And so the one thing I want to make sure I don't have to do is put all of my keywords and my captions in again when I get over to my Shutterstock account. So let's zip over there and you can see how this works. All right, now I'm over in my Shutterstock account. And the nice thing is here's that image that I just uploaded and notice this uh, description that I entered, happy female looking left, there it is. And all the keywords that I entered are there as well. Now this doesn't seem like a huge thing, but it is, especially when you're uploading not one image, but maybe 50 or 60 images to a stock account and you're doing this repeatedly, this really saves a lot of time. Well, let's look at one more way that metadata can really help us out. All right, well, I'm back here in Lightroom and I'm in the library module and at the very top here, we have some things that we can use. One of them says metadata. Now, if I click on that, notice that I get this little drop down box here. Now, what I can do is I can use this to really help me narrow down some searches. So I'm going to click none really fast. and I'm going to go to the left hand side and say I want to look at all the photographs. So I have a little over five and a half thousand photographs here. What I want to do is click the metadata 
and I want to see all of the images that I took with a Rebel T3i. And there it is, Rebel T3i, I've got 143 images. And of the Rebel T3i images, how many of those were shot with a 120 to 300 millimeter lens? There they are. So that's really nice. And I can even uh, look at those and uh, refine these even more. For example, how many of those are, have been flagged as good? One. So I can really quickly go and look for a specific image and then refine from there. So I'm going to go here and say none. And I'll go and say uh, in my metadata, I can search by camera. I can search by serial number, lens, focal length, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, flash state, GPS data, which is great. Maybe you want to look at all your images that were shot in New York or location if you've manually entered those in, creator, copyright status, aspect ratio, and the list goes on and on. And so you can mix and match all this metadata to really find things quickly. You can even go in here and search by text fields. So I will turn off all of my metadata filters and I can just go in here and I want to say, um, where are my images that have Kazooch? Kazooch, there we go. And here are all my Sam Kazooch images because I've keyworded these. And so you can do this if you have a large, large image, you can keyword and you can tag and you can use all the tools available to you in Aperture or Lightroom or whatever your tool of choice is. And that way, instead of having to look and look and look and see if you can find something, you can just use your metadata. For example, what if I said, you know what, I know I shot an image in uh, 2010. So I can just go up here by date and I can say, I want to see all the images that I shot in 2010, specifically in July. Where are they? Okay, well, here we have these images that we shot. And so it works really, really well. So you can see metadata can really help you out and really help you tune in your workflow. And just before we leave, I want to remind you of this awesome website called photometadata.org. It will really help you get off the ground and understand metadata to its fullest potential. Well, thanks, Anand, for the great question, and I hope you learned a lot about metadata. You can see that metadata can really help you out, especially with uh, stock agencies or working with other people. Uh, it helps you just get that information to them with no fuss. It's awesome, awesome. Well, if you're like Anand and you have a question about anything concerning photography or photography gear, please send that to me at askmark at adorama.com, and we might just use it on an upcoming episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. This week, I'll show you all the things that happen about the fudge. <laughs> Hold on, let me see what this is. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.